Hi everyone and welcome to I Make Mommy Moves. I want to talk today about self-care. As parents, we're constantly ripping and running. We're taking the kids to and from school or daycare and their extracurricular activities. We're just constantly all over the place. We're going to and from work and our commute, running errands. Then we come home, we're getting the kids ready, you know, to do their homework and bath time and bed. It's constant cycle where we're always going 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 but when are you making time for yourself when are you making sure that you love and nurture and care for yourself just as you would the children right so for me i try to focus on at least an hour of self-care every day um so i think that you know as parents we have to remember that we're like a water fountain, right? And our kids receive our overflow. So if, you know, we are bringing home all the toxicity of the day and the stressors that we've dealt with at work and everything that's taking place in our day, that flows into our children. So we want to make sure that they receive nothing but positivity and love. So again, that's why self-care is important. You have to take care of yourself. So I want to talk about the 12 things that I do for myself and there's a few that I want to improve upon in 2020. With my self-care list, I have things that I do on either a daily, weekly, or monthly basis. So we're going to go ahead and get into this self-care list, starting with number one. So the first thing for me is my morning affirmations and prayer. Before I get out of the bed, before you know um, I start my day, I make sure to go ahead and do my morning prayer. So having that time with God and just really um, being grateful and thankful and praying to Him and just really focusing on my time with God, that's what's important to me every single morning, right? So then after I do my morning prayer, getting out of bed, getting started and getting ready for my day, I try to run through my affirmations. So I have about 20 on my list that I run through and I keep it on um, a board in my bathroom. Um, a dry erase board that I keep in my bathroom. So I normally do it as I'm getting ready or I'll run through it like as I'm brushing my teeth or right before I brush my teeth. I have my list here um, that I keep on my board. And um, so, you know, just starting out with, you know, I am a child of God. I am blessed beyond measure. I'm grateful for how far I've come. I have nothing to worry about. My God is bigger than my fears. So running through those 20, um, I didn't go through all of them, but those 20 on a regular basis. So, you know, in terms of your affirmations, you can start out with one, right? If this is new for you, start out with one and, you know, just kind of build upon it. Some of those things that you want to instill in yourself and remind yourself, just like as a motivational piece, just remind yourself of who you are, right? Um, and who you want to be. You really want to focus on those things. So I'd say, you know, and for self-care, Let's go ahead and start doing those daily affirmations if you're not already doing them. And of course, your morning prayer. Number two for me is my gratitude journal. So in the evenings, I typically do my devotionals before I go to bed. So as I'm doing my devotional, um, once I complete my devotional, that's when I'll go ahead and get into my gratitude journal. So I'll pull out my journal and I'll try to write down a list of things that I'm grateful for that took place throughout the day. I wanna remind myself of how blessed I am and um, how far I've come, right? So I'm constantly trying to write down those things that took place throughout the day. If it's something as small as, you know, someone let me get in front of them in the grocery store because I had three items and maybe they had a cart full of things, right? That's a blessing. They could have let me sit back there and wait or what have you, especially when I'm running into the store. I'm running either with the kids or before I gotta go get the kids. So it's like I'm normally, you know, rushing, rushing, rushing. So it's important for me to just remind myself of all the things that took place out of the day because some of those things kind of, you know, may seem minor to you or you forget about those things, not realizing just how important um, those things are. So, you know, if you so much as drop your card and someone says, you know, hey, ma'am, you dropped your card or you dropped some cash or or what have you. And with my affirmations, it started out originally. Um, I'll talk about this a little bit further um, another time in another video, but my daughter has autism, my youngest child. So for me, I started with my um, my gratitude journal by writing out 
the things that she was saying because originally she had no words right and then as she started to develop her language and her vocabulary and went from you know one word to you know being able to use two words at a time and build upon phrases and full sentences i would get so excited about it that i was constantly writing out like you know Ariana's now at 50 words or she's now speaking in phrases these are the things that she's saying or this is something that she said once but she hasn't been consistent with this particular language or you know these phrases or what have you so it really started out with doing my gratitude journal by writing out of the things that I was writing down the things that I was grateful for from seeing um, her develop and grow and flourish and then just started reminding myself of all the blessings that um, I'm receiving throughout the day, throughout my week, right? So um, I'd say let's start trying to count our blessings and really write those things out. And whatever works for you, if it's a matter, sorry, my phone's going off. So with the gratitude journal, I try to write out for like a minute or so or whatever, just really let it flow. Just really write down the things that have taken place that you're grateful for, no matter how large or small those things may be. Um, trying to write that out. And if it's, if it's easier for you to write it down on a notepad, in a journal, or you know, in your note section of your phone, whatever it takes, just start writing out your list of things that you're grateful for. And just, I mean, when you look back at that list, let's say for instance, at the end of the week, and just seeing how many blessings you received, I think that it will be a big difference in your life and um, just make you more grateful and appreciative of who you are and how far you've come. So that's number two for me, my gratitude journal. Number three would be drinking lots of water so this is one of the things that i want to improve upon for 2019 so i mainly drink only water anyways every now and again i'll do tea sometimes i'll do coffee but for the most part i strictly do just water so the issue is that i want to make sure that i'm incorporating more water i think like you know um the healthcare and the fitness experts typically say anywhere from eight to ten glasses 64 ounces or, or what have you so for me, I try to make sure that I'm increasing the amount of water that I'm drinking on a regular basis. So I typically do about six glasses um, on a regular basis every now and again. Um, you know, I can do about six or so of the 16 ounce water bottles. But what I just recently purchased was um, a 40 ounce bottle from uh, Kohl's so you don't have to get it from Kohl's I happen to find it on sale but I got a 40 ounce bottle and lately I've been making sure to do at least two of these each day so finishing two of these so I'll you know fill it up I'll add my ice I'll drink it and then um, I'll go ahead and have another one so I can't say that I've gotten to the point where I've done more than two but then I'm also you know kind of you know make it another glass of water throughout the day or what have you um because sometimes this can be a lot to kind of carry around this may not be ideal for someone um if you have you know the baby and you've got bags or whatever but whatever works best for you you don't have to use this particular container um just you know making sure that you have water on hand with you on a regular basis and of course mm -hmm. just drinking lots of water it obviously is good for your body your skin i mean overall health and wellness so of course number three for me is drinking lots of water number four keeping right in the same theme of you know health and fitness is exercise so it can be a struggle you know as parents trying to um, incorporate exercise on a regular basis right it's like you know trying to find time to squeeze it in in between all the many things that you have to do throughout the day so for me what I try to do um, is I mean I do so I did sign up for there's a place here called nine round which was like a, a boxing place um, not too far from my house and it's high intensity workouts where you're doing 30 minute um, circuits with the trainer and they're constantly going to each and every circuit with you it's intense 
um, you're constantly moving non-stop really works I mean each and every muscle and they're training you like that of a boxer right but everyone may not necessarily have the time to go to a place like nine round or your local gym and if that is the case or even the money if you don't you can't afford to do that if that is the case then there's no reason why you cannot do it in your own home I also have a treadmill here I have my exercise exercise bike here I have a trampoline um, I have my kettlebells I have my medicine ball I got the works right so there's really no excuses right other than just trying to manage your time and make it work so um, sometimes I'll do jumping jacks or I'll try to do some form of cardio if I'm, if I'm watching a television show like in between commercials or even doing lunches to and from the kitchen if I go to the kitchen to get something or as I'm going to the kitchen to cook or even when I'm cooking like you know as I'm cooking or I'm you know working on something on the stove put something in the oven you can do jumping jacks in between that time like just finding ways to fit it in even if it's like not having the time starting out with five minutes and building upon that right there's several videos on YouTube um, there's uh, fitness videos that you can find on Amazon Prime where you can do anywhere from five minutes to an hour so whatever works with your schedule just finding time to fit it in you can do it with the kids so that way it's fun for you and the children and you don't have to feel like when will I have time to do this you know I'm busy with the kids find a way to incorporate it with the children so I'd say for me number four is exercise number five for me is spa day and I know there can be times where it's hard to find time to go to the spa or even you know making sure that you have money or enough money to go to the spa but what I like to do is try to get out of the house and take care of myself and do things for me so on a monthly basis I'll go and get my facials um, I try to get a massage every month um, I get my nails and my feet done every two to three weeks and I get my lashes done your hair done whatever that may look like for you going out and having a spa day where that time is all about you where you allow someone to take care of you because you're constantly taking care of the kids so just allowing someone to take care and pamper you so right along with that for whatever reason if you're like look I don't have the time nor the money to go to the spa you can do it right here at home right you can do it right in your home where you know you're doing your own facials you can do a mask and obviously you're putting the kids to bed right because you want this time to be about you so you know you can do a mask you can get one of those pedicure bowls I do have one of the like pedicure um, bowls that you plug in and you know it bubbles up and all that stuff that I don't use it that often but I do have one that I can use from time to time at home so if it means just pampering and taking care of yourself at home do it make sure that you have your very own spa day or that way it's all about you and you're getting a focus on yourself and taking care of yourself number six on my list is a long relaxing bath so as parents you know because we're busy a lot of times all we have time for is a quick shower right you know you hurry up you clean your body and you get out and you're running on to the next thing so what I wanted to incorporate more often in my schedule for 2020 is a nice long relaxing bath going forward that I'm trying to do at least once a week if not more where I get to do my long baths and I have the bubbles and I typically do like either lavender buds or um, rose buds in my bath and then I'll have my essential oils um, also I'll have my candles going the music going like I want to be able to just relax and put everything aside and put everything out and just really just focus on that moment right like nothing else just kick back and relax and soak and read a book if you want to read a book or listen to your podcast or listen to music and just put everything aside and just focus on that moment and taking care of yourself all right so number seven for me is hiring a mate so I know that um, this is something that not everyone feels like they can do or they can afford or they even need, right? But for me, I felt like it was a lot trying to clean this entire house 
from top to bottom sometimes, especially because of my allergies and my asthma trying to deal with dusting. She she's not doing any dusting. I don't I, I do not care to dust. So when I do, I'm normally like in a full on hazmat suit, you know, just to dust the house. So I'm like, why can't I let somebody else do that? So trying to have a maid come in, like she'll do the baseboards. I mean they're cleaning things that I wouldn't even think to get in here and clean there and all kinds of crevices and cracks and go for it. Have at it, right? So um the only thing that I typically do on my own, um without having them help me around the house with is my dishes and my laundry. I prefer to do my own dishes and my laundry. But otherwise, you know, they're wiping down walls and cleaning windows, I mean, the works. So, of course, you know, get a get a consultation, have a team come out and see what it will cost you. It may be affordable and you never know it because you didn't look into it. So I'd say, even if it was something that you're like, I can't do this on a regular basis, maybe doing it monthly, right? Or, you know, trying to do it bi-monthly or quarterly or, or what have you, or you want to do like a an annual thing if, if that works best for you. But really trying to take time out because, I mean, obviously if you're constantly having to clean when are you gonna have time for you if you're cleaning? I mean, sometimes it takes a couple of days <laughs> you know, to clean the entire house to get everything done. So it's like, why not have a team come in? And if for whatever reason, you know, it's not reasonable or um, feasible for you to do it on a regular basis, maybe having them do one particular room or one section of the house or, you know, maybe just doing the downstairs or doing the upstairs, just finding something that fits with your you know the amount of money that you can afford to pay to have um a maid service come in and clean i say go for it that is most definitely on my 2020 list and as i said before i've used it and it works it comes in handy for me so number eight on my list is reading so i really enjoy reading a good book um the most recent book that i got last fall was Marie Forleo's Everything is Figureoutable. If you're not familiar with Marie, I'd say go check her out. She's here on YouTube. She's fantastic. So I've been following her for many years, so I was excited about getting her book. But even if you don't have time to sit back and read a book, why not do, you know, the audiobooks or doing the Kindle? You can get the Kindle app on just about any device nowadays. And for the audiobooks, I listen to that as I'm going to and from throughout my day, whether I'm going to work or running errands. I typically have my audiobook going or as I'm cleaning around the house. Um, you can check out a book from your local library. They also have audiobooks at the library as well. If that's something that you truly enjoy, then you can definitely make time for it, whether it's reading a book or listening to an audiobook or reading it on your device with you on the go. I'd say let's go ahead and start trying to incorporate more reading. So number nine for me is taking a class. So of course you can take an online class, you can take a class at your local community college, or if you wanted to learn more about things that you can do around the house, if you're looking to like DIY projects, you can go to your local um, Home Depot or Lowe's, they provide workshops. If you're looking to do like a DIY arts and craft project, you can learn more about that at your local Michaels. I know they teach classes on um, cake decorating and I think building bird houses. And then also, of course, with the online schools, you can take a class on just about anything. There's no reason why if you're really interested in taking a class that you can't do it. I mean, most of these things are right at your fingertips, whether you're doing it online or if you have to go and take an actual course. So finding the time to get out there and learn more about whatever topic really piques your interest, I say go for it. Take a class. I think it'd definitely be worth it and be a part of your self-care and building and growing yourself. Like, remember those video countdowns I used to do back in the day, like 106 in Park or Video Soul, I think it was Video Soul, where they do, you know, the top 10 countdown of the, the you know, popular videos at that time. So I feel like as I'm running through this list, it's like coming in at number 10. <laughs> so, all right, so coming in at number 10 on my self-care countdown list is forgive others, especially yourself. 
So I think that it's important to remember that forgiveness is not about the other individual. Most of the time, these people, you know, who hurt you or who upset you, they, you know, it happens in that moment and you're the one who's, you know, worrying about it or carrying it on from day to day or many, many years, you know, going forward where it, it happened and they completely forgot about it. You know, it doesn't matter to them one way or the other. And you're still, you know, harboring those, those feelings and ill will or, or what have you. And it's just really eating away at you right so I think it's important for your self-care is to forgive others when it comes to forgiving others you don't necessarily have to say you know I forgive you this is not about them at all you can simply write it out right you can write out you know I forgive you for whatever whatever that may be and you simply write it or you speak it aloud and you forget about it you put it aside right and you start working in whatever you need to do to repair and um, move forward with whatever may have taken place right but forgiveness is simply for yourself you don't ever have to talk to that person ever again so forgiveness is for you and along with forgiving others i think it's important to forgive yourself right as parents i feel that a lot of times we beat up on ourselves or um we feel like we failed because we didn't do something or we made a mistake or we forgot to do something or we missed something right if you for whatever reason weren't able to get off work or you were stuck in traffic and you couldn't make it to little johnny's play that day it's okay right it's okay you know of course he would have loved he or she would have loved to have you there in that moment but it's like it's not worth beating up on yourself if you missed out on that right make up for it make up for it you can still talk all about the play and how it went and you know i mean th those things are just a, a drop in the bucket with all the other things that you'll be able to participate and be a part of and create more and more memories as your child grows so i, I just want to make sure that and this is important for me you know just remembering to forgive yourself you are not going to be perfect no one expects you to be perfect and if you're sitting back and you're focusing on the mistakes you've made or the things that you forgot to do how are you growing from that? So when you fall short, it's important to learn from your mistakes, grow from that, and then find a way to improve upon it. You cannot improve if you're self-loathing and you, you're living with doubt and shame. Not necessary. It's like, what can I do to, you know, apologize to myself first and foremost? And if you, for whatever reason, need to apologize to your child for something that may have happened or you may have forgotten or did wrong, so be it, right? And then grow, move on from it and make it better, improve upon, you know, that situation and you can do it better the next time. No. So number 11 for me is going out on a date or hanging out with your friends. So, you know, if you have a significant other or someone that you're interested in or that you're dating, why not get out the house, you know, get a sitter and Go out, hang out, be able to just, you know, try that new restaurant that you were interested in, go on to see a movie or a play or a concert or a show or whatever. Get out of the house and go and have fun. And if you don't have that, if you, you know, if you want to just go out with your friends, do that. There's no reason to sit in the house where it's just you and the kids all the time. Try to find time where, you know, you and your girlfriends go to a comedy show. Me and my friend just went to a comedy show and went out to eat recently. You could do that. You can do, I mean, the same things that you would do with a significant other, you can go and hang out and do with your girlfriend. So it's like, why not get out the house? And if there's something that you're really interested in doing, go for it you know and if at all possible going and doing a day trip if you want to go and you know go for a couple of hours and go to a show in the next state or or what have you it's like why not go ahead and do that if it's something that you truly want to do start focusing on yourself right go ahead get out the house go to that show and if you don't have anyone to go with don't let that stop you you still should make time to go 
find you a sitter, find you someone that you trust, whether it's family or if you have to hire a sitter, find someone that you really trust and know that will take good care of your kids. And, and by all means, I have tons of cameras throughout my house. Have your cameras up and you can check in on the kids, you can call or what have you, but break away from having to be glued to the house and glued to the children and start getting out more. So one of the things that I missed out on and I wish I would have just went, went by myself. So I pre-ordered Michelle Obama's book and I really wanted to see her when she came here to DC. So she was doing her tour, the book tour. And I mentioned to one of my friends like, you know, we really should go and see her. And it was like, for whatever reason, she wasn't able to get back to me in time. And by the time she did respond back and I went to look at tickets, they were all sold out and I was like, I should have just got the ticket when I wanted to go. Originally, I should have just went ahead and ordered my ticket and I didn't. I didn't purchase my ticket and I missed out on being able to see Michelle Obama speak and do her book tour. So I won't do that again. If there's something that I really, truly want to do, I'm going to go ahead and purchase the tickets and you can go if you can get your own ticket. But I'm going to make sure that I am getting out there and doing what it is that I really want to do. If there's a restaurant that you want to go to, go. Go by yourself. Don't feel like you have to have someone. You have to really truly enjoy your own company first and foremost, right? So if there's something that you want to go see at the movie theater, go. Go. Whatever it is, make sure that you, again, get out of the house and go do what it is that makes you happy. Finishing up with number 12 on my self-care list is going to bed early. This is one of the things that I truly struggle with and want to improve in 2020. Um, I have since as far back as middle school had issues with going to bed. I typically go to bed anywhere from 2 to 4 a.m. I'm always up. Um, so I think that I have really been trying to do better with getting things out of the way, whether it's, you know, getting the kids' lunches packed and getting their um, clothes ready for the next day, getting myself ready for the next day, you know, cleaning and doing everything, getting everything done so that way I can take a shower and get in the bed. That's one of the things that I truly struggle with. I know that... Um, I have an Apple Watch now. I've had an Apple Watch for a few years now, but originally I, back when I had my Fitbit um, and I would be a part of the challenges, I was crushing those challenges and I was always winning them. <laughs> and a lot of times the people that I was competing against were always wondering like, how do you, how are you getting in so many steps? But that's because at, I come alive at night, right? I'm a night owl. So at night, it's like anywhere between like 10 and 11 o'clock, it's like, boom, all of a sudden I get this, you know, this urge to do everything it is that I need to do. So it's like I start putting in, you know, clothes in the laundry. I want to start washing clothes. I'm in here washing dishes. I'm sweeping. I'm mopping. I'm vacuuming. It's like all of a sudden I want to do everything that I probably should have did early in the day, but either didn't have the time for or truly didn't want to do, right? So I don't know how, you know, people function, <laughs> you know, getting up early and being able to function during the day. Like I am just, I, I'm not there, you know, daylight hours is just not for me. But when the nighttime comes, all of a sudden I come alive. And of course we all know that it's important to get anywhere from, what is it, like eight hours, eight to 10 hours or so of sleep every night so let's start working on going to bed early getting our rest so we can be rejuvenated and better um, and better parents and, and individuals and employees and what have you for the next day okay so let's go ahead and do our recap hey DJ bring that back hey DJ bring that back so coming in at number one on the top 12 self-care list countdown <laughs> is the morning prayer and affirmations Number two is the gratitude journal. Number three, drink lots of water. Number four, exercise. Number five, spa day. Number six, long relaxing baths. Number seven, hire a maid. Number eight is reading. Number nine is taking a class. 
Number 10 is forgive others, especially yourself. Number 11 is going out on a date and hanging out with friends. And number 12 is going to bed early. So when I first started this video, it was light outside. It is now dark. So I say all that to say that I'm trying to be consistent with my videos. But as you all know, I am recently divorced, single mom. So I am busy with the kids constantly going to and from any of their extracurricular activities, work, school, daycare. I mean, you name it, we're in it. So trying to find time to, of course, as part of my, you know, things that I want to do for myself, part of my self-care is trying to find time to make these videos for you all to put out new content. So bear with me. I'm trying to come up with a regular routine that works with my schedule and keeping with the theme of self-care. The kids are now home from school, so I need to get them ready for bed. So one of the things that I plan to do tonight, I am going to sit back, relax, and finish watching Watchmen. I have really been binging this show over the last week, watching every so episode after episode. So I have one episode left. I am down to episode nine. So I'm getting ready to use that hour tonight of self-care to watch Watchmen. So if you know anything about Watchmen, if you're at all interested, it is definitely worth checking out. So that's my self-care for tonight. And please like and subscribe, turn your notification bells on and comment below and I will be sure to add my self-care list to the description box. Thank you all so much for joining. Take care. Bye.